I'm pro saxophonist Jamie Anderson, you're watching Get Your Sax Together, and in this week's video I'm going to bring you part two of the most effective way to practice scales. Linked on the card up there, you will find a link to go to the first video I did on practicing scales, where we learned to start on the note, go right to the top of the range, down to the bottom, and then finish on the note. Now this video, which is part two of my best way to practice scale series, we're gonna take it to the next level. I'm gonna give you some great tools to improve your technique, be a much better saxophonist, and give you some tools to use when you're learning to improvise on jazz or pop or any genre. In the meantime, if you're enjoying the uh, Get Your Sax Together channel, please do help me out. You can subscribe, ring the bell to be notified when I upload new stuff. Check out my Instagram feed, some pretty cool stuff on there. And down in the description, you will find a free PDF which has got this exercise written out. So go down there, print it off, and we'll get stuck into the lesson now. Right, let's get started. We're gonna choose the key of C. <laughs> Why not? Now you can play this, of course, on tenor, alto, soprano, barry, any sax, because you're not gonna be playing along with the backing track or anybody else. So whatever I teach you now, whatever notes come up, it's the same for alto, tenor, and all the different instruments. It's a solo study. So first thing we're gonna do is play the scale from the note to the top, to the bottom, and back to the note, as I showed you on the first video. <laughs> Next thing to do is to play the major scale in thirds. Now remember, for all these exercises, practice with a metronome, even if you have to play it slower than usual. Practice with a metronome to really get your technique dialed in. Here's that second phase, which is playing the major scale in thirds. <laughs> So far so good. Next phase is to play the major scale in triads. So for each scale note, you go up a triad within the notes of the scale. So it's gonna sound like this. <laughs> Now what we do is we go up the first triad and then down the next one. So it's gonna be C, E, G, which is the first triad. Then we go A, F, D, which is going down the second one. And then E, G, B, going up the third one. And C, <laughs> I forgot what it was, C, A, F, going down the fourth one and so on. So the pattern sounds like this. <laughs> Okay, continuing the theme, you might see where this is all going any minute soon. We're now gonna do seventh chords built on each note of the major scale. So C, E, G, B, D, F, A, C, and we go up, so on and so forth, all the way up the scale. Sounds like this. <laughs> Now, just like we did with the triads, we go up one, down the next one, up one, down the next one. <laughs> course is just the major scale. So we need to do it for our ascending melodic minor scale 
and our harmonic minor scale. Now we don't need to worry about the descending melodic minor scale like you see in classical music because that's actually just a major scale, a major third beneath the minor key that you're in. But we won't worry about that too much. Suffice to say, we're gonna do exactly the same patterns on C, ascending melodic minor scale, and C, harmonic minor. So here's what those, I'm gonna skip the first ones and go straight to the sevenths. Here's what the sevenths sound like on the C melodic minor scale. <laughs> Here's the pattern with sevenths on the harmonic minor. So C harmonic minor, this is what it sounds like. <laughs> is all fantastic if you're a beginner, intermediate player. Now, if you wanna take it to the next level, what we would do is extend that pattern, go back to the major scale, and extend the pattern going up to the ninths, the elevenths, and the thirteenths on the major scale. So, just doing the ninths quickly, it would sound like this. <laughs> Doing the elevenths would sound like this. going up to the thirteenths, which is just stacking thirds all the time. All the time we're just adding another third for each scale note. For each scale step we're going up in thirds, further and further up. The thirteenths pattern on the major scale sounds like this. <laughs> is repeat those ninths, elevenths, and thirteenths on the melodic minor and the harmonic minor. I'm not gonna do it on this video to save time, but that will take you quite a while, and I would just take one key a day, maybe one key a week, to get even better at it. And that way, gradually, those keys and those notes and those shapes are really gonna come under your fingers. Now, when it comes to improvising, Especially in jazz, chords are always built up in thirds. So by the time you come to playing jazz and transcribing jazz solos, now if you wanna learn how to transcribe stuff, go and check out my series linked on the card up there. That'll teach you how to transcribe. So when you start transcribing jazz stuff, you'll see that so many of the patterns are made up of stacks of thirds and you've already got them under your fingers from practicing this scale. So work away at it, take your time, practice with a metronome, and you will be amazed how much better you get doing this. So be disciplined, work away at it, and I hope you enjoy it. That's it for this week. Quick video on how you can really take practicing scales to the next level, get your technique together, get your soloing skills together at the same time, and just be a better musician and saxophonist. So if you're enjoying the channel, subscribe, ring the bell, <laughs> check out my Instagram, and most importantly of all, good into, into the PDF, and get that free sheet, which has got this entire exercise written out in all keys. That's a wicked resource. You're gonna love that. Hope you enjoy it, and I'll see you next week on Get Your Sacks Together. <laughs> Linked up on the card now up there, you will find the video, my first part, ah, it's rubbish. <laughs> <laughs>